We want to welcome you to Discipleship University, where the message is one body in Christ and love. We want to thank everyone for uh, chiming in this evening. Uh, amen. We want to um, tell everybody to share at this time. You know, share, let someone know we're getting ready to enter into the world. We're about to break some bread. Um, I want to. I am Apostle Daryl Albury, and I'm glad to have you this evening, my brother, whom I love, uh, yes. Prophet Eric. Yes, amen. Yes, yes, amen. Thank you for amen. Me, amen. 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 What we're gonna do is, we're going to. I'm gonna ask the Prophet to uh, lead us in prayer yes, as sir. we begin to before we go into the session. Amen. 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 And we're gonna just break some bread today. Have a good time today. You know, get your notebooks, uh, get your Bible, uh, get your pen, and. Let us hear what the Spirit of the Bible says. Let us hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say today, amen. Let it be locked into our spirit that it may begin to produce some fruit that we may grow thereby and increase it in the things of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Go ahead, my brother. Amen. My brother, my brother. amen. Uh, let us go before the throne of grace and all humility and submission. Most gracious and heavenly Father. God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this moment in time, God. God, we thank you, God, that it is you who was and is and is to come. God, we ask now that as we come before your throne of grace, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into the place of where we can see and hear, God, for your word declares unto us that it is the Spirit that leadeth us into all truth, God. And even if that truth is in the place of your heart, we ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to lead us there, God. As we go before you, your people, God, and to the word of God, we ask that you would give us clarity and understanding, God. God, we ask that you would annihilate and pulverize any carnality and flesh, God, emotions and mentality, God. We ask that you would lead us into the word, God, give us the uh, ability, God, to dissect line upon line and precept upon precept, God, and the word that goes forth on today, let it fall on good ground, let it transition, change, and shift the trajectory of someone's life, that they may be able, God, to draw themselves, God, nigh back unto you as you draw nigh unto them. God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise because it is due unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. It was um, a blessing that um, I know we did a, we did, um, a talk um, together, and I wanted to have my brother come join um, us today here at uh, Discipleship University on uh, um, to just uh, talk about some things God placed on your heart. I know that um, you know God is uh, with you, man, and that God's Spirit is uh, dwelling with you, and it's the Spirit of Truth, Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, and we want to hear what the Spirit of Truth, what God has to say today. Amen. So I'm gonna just simply ask you, so we can just get into it, Amen. Yes, and like yes, I said again, yes, I want everybody to share, share, man. Let somebody know that um, uh, to, to tune in, chime in today, that we can hear. Um, what is God saying to you today? What is God? What is God talking about you? Today? I know, because I know it's like when they, they say they have a thing where people say, "Are oh, you in the vein?" You know, right, 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 you right, right, You know, that's right. some some vein of what we say in, right. in the kingdom. You know, are you connected? And I just want to hear you tell me what what is, what is God saying to you? Well, uh, Apostle, well, thank you for asking. First of all, thank you for having me. It's a yeah, blessing to be yes. here with you, man, on the same platform, Amen. especially. I thank God for the years of being connected to one body. Amen. 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 I thank God Amen. for for you. Um, so I'll just go directly into uh, something that the Lord has been uh, dealing with me with. Um, it's just, just last season, I was just focused on mental health and the gospel. Like, Amen. you knew that's the talk that yeah, you came on. Amen. The gospel according to mental health because we have um, so many people, so many leaders, um, so many individuals tied into the gospel that are trying to live righteous and trying to live holy. And, and the revelation that the Lord gave me is to say that a mind mm -hmm. that rejects God is a soul that cannot inhabit him, mm -hmm. right? And so that's mm -hmm. why when we were focusing on the gospel according to mental health, that's where we went. Because if your mind rejects the God that you profess, mm -hmm. then your soul cannot house him. And Amen. if your soul can't house him, then he does not live in you, right? Mm -hmm. And Amen. so uh, recently, just as the Lord had been uh, communicating with me and speaking to me, I have been uh, focused um, with one of my spiritual children. We were having a conversation and they said something, just in regular conversation, and it hit my spirit. What are you plugged into? Mm. What right. Plugged into, uh, what, what what are you what are you plugged into? Where are you and, and I, I liken it to a house, uh the electricity. Okay. If you 
plug in the lamp, but the power is off. It's plugged in, mm -hmm. but there's no flow. Come on. Okay. There's you won't get light. Mm. It won't illuminate. There's no glory in a powerless lamp. Come on. And so what I've come to find out is that we have to now start checking what we're plugged into because what we plug into is what we project. Mm -hmm. Right? right, and so as as I begin to just deal with that thing, and I'm saying, God, uh, what is it that you trying to say? He said that everybody's trying to plug into my power. Mm. Everybody's mm. trying to plug into to, to mm. my glory. Mm. Everybody's trying to plug into prophecy. Everybody's trying to plug into the apostle. He says, but who is plugged into the real source that give the power, yes. that give the prophecy? So while we're plugging into everything else, what we need to be plugging into is the word of God. Yes, yes. It's yeah. time that we now plug into the word, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a spiritual surge happening. Come on. We'll sit in church and we'll allow someone to preach to us and we'll live our life based on that preacher's experience, mm. never going to the source of the revelation. Oh, man, so we it. have to be mindful and careful. So that's why I'm at getting back to the word of God, mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. the word of God, being a living testament. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I can go on for no, just no, go ahead and let you chat. No, 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 I'm going to tell you something. No, I love it. No, what are you plugged into? And I, what I love about what you're saying is that. Uh, where is your source of power mm -hmm. coming from? You know what I'm saying? And um, um, what I love about it is, it's so in what God was even talking to me about. Um, and I want to just add to that and say, in Jeremiah 1 12 says, He watches over His word to yes. perform it. Who, who you plugged into in your source of power is constantly watching over mm -hmm. that which uh, He is releasing. Mm -hmm. You know, which he is releasing to each individual. He's constantly watching over what he is releasing. And there's two things that, that stuck out to me today. There's two things that kind of stuck out to me. And you, and you, you took it right in the direction God was dealing with me about. Um, one is that he watches over the word. Mm -hmm. So like you said, we, getting back to the word. Getting back to what we're plugged into mm -hmm. and the word. And knowing that the, what we're plugged into, number one, um, that, that there's, a, there's one watching over it. Mm -hmm. And number two, um, he says, and it was 1 Corinthians 3, 7 says, but God that gives the increase. Mm -hmm. And that's what he gave me. So one, one watching over it, and the one who's watching over it is also the one who has the ability to give the increase. Yes, Knowing how much, you know, it's like a surge. When, when you plug into something, there, there are different bolts. They're not all mm -hmm. the same. Everybody is not the same. So the one that um, that is watching over it knows how to give increase to it. Yeah. And and and, I, and, and what and why it came to me because there's a there's a source of power that God wants to um, that. I got to begin to put in my heart to talk about their increase in what, and, and I'm going to give you this what's interesting. The Bible says this that that when we talk about love, the Bible says that um, if you love those who love you, it yeah, profits you nothing. nothing. <clears throat> that word profit means increase. Mm -hmm. It it means it's not increasing you if you only have the ability to love those. Who love you, and, right. that, and and to me, this is what, and, and the reason I'm saying it is because there's something that God said, and, and I want to read this in John 13 and 14. He says, I'm, I'm gonna process this. Process this. Says, uh, where is it? Right here on this code. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one another. Yes. So. What is he, the, 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 watch, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta add this to it too. Now, watch this. He says, that's what it says in the book of John, in the book of John right? The uh, 13th chapter, uh, 34 and 35. But then it says, it took me from John to 1 John, this, uh, 1 John, uh, the second chapter, in verse, I mean, verse 5 and 6. But whomsoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. So that increase, mm -hmm. that increase that God is watching over, that increase that uh, that what He's watching of that increase is His word, and He says, "Watch what He says." That, and whosoever keeps His word, in Him verily is the love of God. 
And he, but he's telling us over here in, in John that a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. So I can't love one another unless I'm plugged into love. love. Yes, and sir. the love that I'm plugged into is increasing me to love one another. And, and that's the manifested power of yes. that love. That's the manifested power of that surge yes. um, that God is releasing. And he said, and watch this, and this is so interesting. He says, um, but whosoever keeps his word, in him verily is the love of God mm -hmm. perfected. Hereby know ye that we are in him. He that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Yes. And so love is an action word. Mm -hmm. It's not just so when you are plugged in, when when you plug something up, you never plug something up without expecting action. My God. Come on, man. Yes, Come yes, on. If, if, if there is no action, if I plug something in and the light don't come on, if that, that tells me there is no power there, there's no action there, there's nothing, in other words, the connection, there's something wrong with the connection mm -hmm. that is not producing something mm -hmm. which ought to call somebody to see or mm -hmm. call somebody to be able to do something. So when I looked at it as God was talking about increase, because and what really stuck, in my, stuck out of my spirit when he said that um, if we only love those who, that, love, that, us. who love us, it doesn't profit us. We don't increase. In right. other words, right. your, 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 your source is limited if you can only love to your own ability. Yeah. Come on, man. Yes, sir. See, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. our source becomes limited when we can only love to our own ability. But when we are plugged up, the power source in which we are plugged up in, he said, you won't know. You won't know my disciples in the, their ability so to you love. Know. You won't know who they plugged up to. Yes, you won't know their power source because they're going to have this supernatural type of love. They're going to have this type of love that can love their own enemies. Mm -hmm. The kind of love that, that'll pray for those that spitefully used to, who bless those who curse them. Yes. It's going to be a walk out love. And I, and, 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 and I believe the attack of that, of Satan, that's why the scripture says that it, um, because of iniquity, the love of God is going to wax cold. Yeah. Lawlessness is attacking the source of the power, the, the, the heart that causes it not to be able to flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like when you, if, if you put the wrong plug into the socket, and, and that socket it'll can't blow. come on, it'll blow. It'll blow. It's shutting out everything. Yep. It's shutting out. And iniquity is that when you run into lawlessness, it, 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 it tries to shut down everything. Amen? But I'm glad that God has a die heart. I'm glad yeah. God is a die heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? So what you think? You, you know what's interesting uh, that you that you go there, Apostle, from the book of John, because that's mm -hmm. where that's where the Lord has been taking me also. One of the things that I've been studying, like really pressing towards and, and grappling and wrestling with the Lord about is God has been dealing with me about Eli and his sons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's a different segment, but it's going to time to hear me quickly because Eli and his sons, um, what the Lord has been dealing with me about is how they handle mm -hmm. the things of God. Okay, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you were talking about that surge and, and that the open eye and the love, mm -hmm. one of the things that I've come to realize is that we have so many people trying to love people mm -hmm. from a place of darkness. Mm -hmm. okay. And expecting love mm -hmm. From people in a place of darkness, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So what I what do you mean by that, Prophet? What I mean is we have so many people trying to love people from a place of brokenness, yes. never dealing with the brokenness. Mm -hmm. You you're trying to love me, and you haven't even gone before God for the frustrations yes. of life that is weighed upon you. Mm -hmm. You are, and, and again, I say trying to because, mm -hmm. of course, like the scripture says, mm -hmm. you will know them that they are mine yes. by the way that they love one mm -hmm. to another, mm -hmm. right? And he says in the word, as you quoted, that 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 uh, one has to love his brother and one has to love. Well, if you love those who love you, what profits mm -hmm. that yeah. you, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that, and John uh, the chapter of John, the first verse, chapter of John, uh, verses four, it uh, says, "In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, yes. and the darkness comprehended it not." Why is that so intricate, and that we understand that? Because prior to that 
verse. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us that in the beginning was the Word, word. Yes. and the Word was with God, mm -hmm. and the Word was God, and God was the Word, right? Mm -hmm. So if you plug right there before you get into the point that the darkness could not comprehend, mm -hmm. like what he was trying to tell you in the proceeding of that was that, listen, the Word is coming, mm -hmm. and I know you want to preach it, mm -hmm. and I know you want to be the Word, mm -hmm. but guess what? You cannot be the Word in a dark place. Come on. Because mm -hmm. if you try to be the word in a dark place, then it's going to expose you. Mm -hmm. Because the darkness cannot comprehend the light. So if you're trying to love someone, um, when we because we, we talk and we teach the people, you have to love in spite of. Right. You have to you have to, to love. That don't mean if you angry with them, just love them. No, mm -hmm. because then we have to do line upon line and precept upon precept. Right. So when we teach people that, they think, well, even if I'm angry with you, I gotta love you. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm mad, I gotta love you. Even if I'm hurting, I gotta love you. But there are instructions mm -hmm. to that too, because mm -hmm. we'll go directly to the assignment, but mm -hmm. we'll forget the instruction. Yeah. Because if you go over in scripture, the Bible tells us if you have an ought with that brother, mm -hmm. leave thy mantle at the altar mm -hmm. and go to that brother, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. you have to seek out the forgiveness. You have to mm -hmm. seek out that, 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 that's that level of love that we don't want to get to where we have to, where we're forced to lose our right mm -hmm. to be right in a situation. Mm -hmm. That's that unmerited love that God gives us. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you go through verses 1 and 4, and it tells you how the word was, how the word was made, and we're out here preaching, and we're out here prophesying, but then we're not talking to people. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are here speaking in tongues, but then we don't speak to people. Right. We, we, we prophesying, right? But we're profiting from it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the issue that we face because he said darkness cannot comprehend mm -hmm. light. Now, on the averted part of that, mm -hmm. we're trying to get people to love from a dark place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love is light. Yeah. So love can't live in darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to translate it for you right quickly. Mm -hmm. You cannot love someone from a toxic place. Right. There is no such thing as toxic love. Right. That is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is you're putting emotions in a forefront position of where God should be because you're forcing yourself to give someone the love and the capacity that which God should be occupying mm -hmm. relationship friendship ministry mm -hmm. that's why it behooves us to go before the Lord allow him to clean and purge us Come on. as you were saying mm -hmm. sir about that love to clean and purge us before we can disseminate or deliver the love of Christ yeah. No, that, no, I love it. I, I love it because I, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and um, and it's funny because you know when you take tests, right? And I, 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 I'm, I've, I've said this before. Um, they they give you a reading test, mm -hmm. and you you know you 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 you're an educator, uh, uh, extreme high educator, um, <laughs> you're, you're an educator, and they they um, give you tests, but then they give you another test on comprehension. Mm -hmm. and, and comprehension means do you understand and it's hard to love someone like you said from a dark place because you don't understand right you don't understand what's required of you you don't understand the process you in other words I can say uh, uh, and I'm, and I'm gonna tell you well, this is so funny that we that God has led us to this morning because I even in the ministry of one body in Christ and love right it's funny one body in Christ and love one body in Christ. Christ means anointed one. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when there's anointed one, you know, the anointed doesn't destroy the yoke. But the hindrance that, that in the heart that begins, that we can be able to, to be in love, to mm -hmm. walk in love. And we used to always say this at one body, it's time to love. We used to say, it's time to love. We used to end every service declaring and decreeing, it's time to love. But all madness and craziness broke out when God had us change it to say, it's time to walk in love. In other words, that's why if you notice when I when I when I read when I went to um and, and when I went to John in the John the first chapter, he says that we are to walk as he walked. It is easy to say something, it's another thing to apply it. Mm -hmm. And I can read something, and what's funny about that, because you can read something without comprehension. Wow. You know what I'm saying? If, if people do it to school, I, they are great readers, but they do not and when it comes to tests, see, comprehension is test time. Yep. See, they, they, I, I never get in school. They were like, man, okay, 
I used to hate this too, man. You know, just me. I just hate it. They had tell you to read this paragraph. They give you a time limit to read the paragraph, and then you had to answer these questions <laughs> within a certain line. So I'm sitting there trying to figure out. And, and, and but what they were trying to see is, did you comprehend did what you, you had to the point where you can apply it? Yeah. Did you comprehend it to the point? And that's why the Bible says, think it not strange when trials come to test your faith. So if I receive the word, when trials come, they are coming to see if I comprehended it enough yeah. to be able to apply it in that situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To uh, and, and, and what's funny, when you comprehend something, you know how to give the right answer. Right. You know how to respond correctly. Right. And that's why, and that word darkness derives from the word ignorance. Mm -hmm. There is a, there is an ignorance to, and we, and this is a part I've seen in myself. I'm talking about, I've seen in the body in this great fall in the way. I saw in this great fall in the way that people were able to quote the word, but when it came time for application of the word to walk it out, we found ourselves falling short. My we found ourselves falling short. We're irritated. We don't like this sister. We don't like this brother. Now, and it's interesting. And why? Why is God shaking this? Because remember, we told you He watched over His word. Yes. And yes. I think He watches over His word to perform it. So God is going to test you to see if you can, if, if, if that word is being performed. Yes. Come on. Yes. Man. Yes. Want me? Yes. If, can you perform that word in the midst of that text? Amen. Yes. Sir. And, 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 and He said, and then they'll know that you are mine. You are my yeah. disciples. It, 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 it's funny that I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. Abraham was Abraham waited many years to get Isaac, mm -hmm. and, Isaac and, and Isaac was the promise. Amen. Isaac was the promise, and Abraham tried to help God out by going and sleeping with Hagar and getting Ishmael, but that was not the promise. And and then guess what? The, the promise comes. Sarah gets pregnant. Isn't this good? My God. And then when Sarah gets pregnant and she receives that which God has spoken, the word that God has spoken, God comes to Abraham and says to Abraham, I want you to go offer up mm -hmm. uh, Isaac. Mm -hmm. I want you to go sack. I want to see, do you understand? Do you comprehend who I really am? Do you understand that my word, do you understand that I, I watched over it to perform it? Yeah. And I gave you a word that I, and, and I am the God that gives increase. Yes. That's why I, so Abraham goes and takes Isaac up to begin to sacrifice. And when he begins to take out Isaac up, he binds, he binds Isaac up and puts him on the altar. And he begins to sacrifice. You, in, in that text, you hear uh, God says, now I know. Yeah. Now I know that you understand my love. You understand faith. Because whatever I tell you to do, if you are in compliance, it's going to always work out. It's always going to prosper in that which I am saying. Even if I tell you to do something that may look crazy, if I tell you to move in a certain way and storms may come and situations may occur, you know that I have the power to speak to the storm. Yeah. You know that I watch over my word to perform it. So if I ask you to do something and you comprehend who I am, you won't hinder to do it because you understand who I am yeah. and I'm love. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And love has the tendency to bear all, believe yeah. all, hope all, and do all. Love cannot fail. Yeah. So my word cannot fail. If we even understood that when it came to relationship, well, the Bible says that which God has put together, let no oh, man, man put it under. Yeah. If we understood that concept of God's word and God watching over his word, and his word has to, and God's word has to bring increase. Yes. That yes. even in the marriage, when it looks crazy, it looks like it's going rough, understand that the one who spoke the marriage has the ability to cause it to increase. Yeah. Yeah. To comprehend. Yeah. You have to comprehend beyond what you see. Oh, wait, you, because you, you don't know someone. Yeah, so. you, got, you got to be able to comprehend beyond what you see because a lot of times the just walk by faith and not by sight. Um, meaning that you might, it may not look like it's going to be possible. It may not look like it, it's going to happen. But because the one who said it watches over his word to perform it, you can trust in that. Yeah. You can believe in that no matter how it looks like, which will cause you to operate and function in that situation different than somebody who don't have faith. Right, right, right. So, 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 I'm glad you, you know, got me, listen, listen, because I'm trying to be respectful in, in this place, and I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to get buck wild, you know what I'm saying? Get buck wild. Um, so, so, one of the things that, that I love that you uh, mentioned, and we have to understand, because what happens is, it translates for us, do we love ourselves mm -hmm. enough yes. to seek out truth? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We 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 most of us walk around afraid to die. So if we see trouble, we are gonna avoid it. 
in the natural. Yes. yes. But we'll run right into spiritual trouble. Mm. We we don't we we and I'm just being honest. Yes. Let's let's just say it like this. What happens is now if we take the moment to be truthful with ourselves, we can operate in love. Yes. Right? Because I'm I'm at a point now where where we have to I'm able to testify and at a season in my marriage and I was reading this mm -hmm. out of your book mm -hmm. from Hoish to Holy. And I was reading this in, in your book, and, and it didn't say these words verbatim, but as I was reading it, it's what the Lord began to minister to me. Because if we truthfully get to a point where we can go before God and tell the truth, three yes. things, God, I'm only tolerating you. Mm. God, I'm tolerating me. Mm. God, I'm tolerating the people around me. Mm. Because if we're truthful enough to say, God, this is not what love looks like. Yes. This is not what your love feels like. So what I'm having is I'm struggling with my faith, which mm -hmm. means at a point I'm only tolerating you, God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tolerate you no more. Oh. I want to be in love oh. with you, and I want you to be in love with me. But if we get to a point where we can choose, and the problem is that we will continue to try to run with this facade, John. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to try to run and tolerate God. We'll continue to try to run and tolerate testing and trials and pressures and issues like and then when it gets too much, now we blame everybody but ourselves. Yeah. Now and so um um what I what I wanted to go to as you were were, were speaking of that, that getting that comprehension, that, that truth is a level of comprehension. Yes. Yeah. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit leads us into yeah. all truth. So what are we trying to comprehend? When you're trying to comprehend, you need, the first of all, if you're going to be a son or daughter of God, yes. you need the Holy Spirit to yes. comprehend for you. Because mm -hmm. the Bible even tells us that the Holy Spirit made utterance for those things mm -hmm. that we know not. Yes. In another version, it says that we do not understand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So really what comprehension is, think about it, and I, and I used to be that same person. Like, I'm a multiple choice type person. Right. <laughs> Because I don't have to read the whole paragraph. Right. I look for context clues. Yeah. If three three words in this question is the same three words in this paragraph, then that's what the answer is. <laughs> Let's make it happen. That's what I know. So 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 that that's what the, the Holy Spirit leads us to all truth. So what comprehension is, if we really look at it, what the test is to do when they say it's trying to see if you comprehend, it's trying to see if you're able to see mm -hmm. the purpose. In the text, oh, right? What does that look like? If we're reading the story about Johnny mm -hmm. and, and 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 Johnny uh, had to climb to the top of the mountain, and Johnny had saw a bear, he saw a tiger, he saw this, he saw that. They're not just trying to see if you realize that he saw a tiger, bear, or or, or they want you to name those things. But when it translates to the spirit, what comprehension is is vision. Mm -hmm. Do you see the word of God? Mm -hmm. In action, because what happens is because we can't see the word of God in action, we can't be the action. Mm. We can't perform what we don't see. That's why he say, "I watch over my word to perform it." Because when I watch you, when I watch what you're doing, when I watch how it's moving, when I watch the way the earth is, then I can respond based on where you are, right? Because he's a just God. Now, now, with that, with watching, I want to take you to scripture, mm -hmm. seeing. Remember, I said comprehend right, and seeing. Mm -hmm. And it's going to blow your mind if possible right. right quick. I'm, I'm ready. Check mm -hmm. this out. Revelation, the 22nd chapter and the 19th verse, mm -hmm. is so important in this day and time that we're talking about love. Mm -hmm. We're talking about comprehension. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the increase. Mm -hmm. So why do we run into the dilemmas that we run into? The scripture reads this, and if any man shall take away from the word of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of the life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. What does that tell us? That tells us that we don't have the authority to pick and choose yes. what we're going to say. Mm. We don't have the right to pick and choose how we going to live based on the word that stands out to us the most. Yeah. We have to be able to comprehend this word enough to live it. How do you take from the word of God? Not just by preaching alternative word. Right. Not just by uh, uh, the digital app. They're going to take that off. They, mm -hmm. can, they notice 
And let me just say this while I'm here. Notice this. You better get you a written Bible. Yeah. And better get you a written Bible soon. Why is that important? Because your Bible is on an electronic that they control. Yeah. So they can transition the words to whatever they like. Mm. And you'll read it and not understand it because you opened the Bible app. So get you a, 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 a paper Bible. Yeah. Not only get you a paper Bible, study and put it in the tablet of your heart. Because mm -hmm. when they take all of these away. But I said that to, to, to say this. You don't take it away by just removing it from the scripture. Mm -hmm. You don't take the word away by just removing it from the app. Or you take the word, you take away from this word when you don't live it to its fullest. Mm. Remember, Apostle just said he watches over his word. Yes. So if he watches over his word, the Bible tells us in the book of John, the first chapter, I believe that's down to the 14th verse, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible says, and the word became and flesh, flesh. Yes. and dwelt among us. And God watches over his word. And if God is watching over his word, you say you have the word in you and he's looking at you. He's trying to figure out why his word don't look like what he wrote. Come on. Why his word is not loving the way he said love. Why his word is not blessing, healing, praying, fasting, consecrated the way he said. That's how you take away from the word. That's why we struggle. That's why we go through trial and tribulation. Because our life is not lining up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what's interesting? You know God has an expectation of that. And the reason you know, and the reason I say that to you, that God has an expectation. Just like, for instance, Florida Power and Light have an expectation that when you plug in, unless they cut it off, that your lights are to come on. Yeah. Church almost seems, what church is today, it almost seems like it's the only place that you're supposed to be plugged in and that shouldn't, and we make excuses that there's no results. We, we church is only, we'll say we only human. It's the only place, and that's why God said, I want you to go to Discipleship University where one body Christ is the message. Because if you change, if you change the, uh, the, the, if you change the purpose of something. Yes. Once you change the purpose, you right. change the outcome. And it becomes yes. perverted. It becomes yes. perverted. And Satan understands that. He understands that if he can just a little leaven will change the purpose. Yes, something God. used out of purpose will destroy something. Yes, God. Something used out of purpose will destroy you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It will cook it. So I, I, I truly, uh, and, and and when you plug, and, and, I, and the reason I say that with, with, with church is because when people go to church and we say, and I, I want to say something, yes, there's struggle. The Bible says the flesh wars against the spirit and yep. the spirit wars against, against the flesh. flesh. He's telling you this. But God is not speaking in his word as if you, you and I cannot have victory. Right, right. And he also is not speaking in his word that your victory is, um, is something that is going to come. As in, as in a means that you cannot attain victory now. And, 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 and that victory now is the ability to submit. He said, the oath to submit to the Lord. He said, submit to the Lord. Resist the enemy. Yeah. Well, how, how, am I, how am I able to resist the enemy? I'm submitted Submit. to the Lord. We skip that part. Yeah. We come skip on, that part. Come on, come on. Come on. You, you, you own it. We yeah. skip that part. That's submit right. to the Lord. Submit, submit right. to the word. Submit to the word and then increase. Because if he's watching over the word... To, that it may be performed, and you are receiving that word. That's why Jesus would say, Oh, ye a little fa a faith. Why? He's saying, You are not operating in the fullness of the power which you yes. have in the yes. Because yes. I'm looking at you, and, I, and, 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 and when I'm looking at you, come on, Peter, you asked me to step out on the water. I told you you can step out on the water. You're connected to me. I said, Step out on the water. You step out on the power source of the water, which sustains you. Then when storms began to come, while the storms began to roar a little harder, you took your eyes off the power source. Right, right, and you right. began to believe that the storms were greater than what you were connected to. Right, that right. As, the word, as if the word was going to be able, could not sustain you through the storm. And that's what, we got to get this. We have to begin to understand that the word of God can sustain us through the trials of life. Yes, that Lord. the word yes, of God Lord. can keep you and I through the words of life. It can keep you, and watch this, this is so good. 
and the word is keeping you, is increasing you. Yes, my yes, God. Yes, and God, yes. you know, man, I had to learn. I'm tell you what I had to learn. As a, as, a, as a pastor, as an apostle, I had to learn something. Many times, I, I found myself getting emotionally pulled in certain ways yeah. when I was preaching and dealing yeah. with people because I had an expectation to uh, 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 people to perform that which was given to them. I had expectation, which we should, we, should, we, we, are, we are to expect. But then I began to realize, God said, see, the problem is, I need you to turn your eyes back to me. He says, now, one man water, one man plant. But he says, but well, I am the one, my God. He says, now, when you look at them and you allow their behavior to bring doubt, you're not doubting them, you're doubting the increase. Yes, God. You're doubting the word that I told you to speak, and you don't believe that I can watch over that word to perform it that I've given to you to decree. See, God can, when God gives you a word, that's why we want the real prophets, like you, yeah. we want the true prophets, why? Because God, when you have false prophets, false prophets breed discontentment, discontentment with God, they breed, now you're not really discontented with God, but you're really discontent with falsehood, but you don't know it's falsehood. Yeah. Because you don't understand because yeah. you can't see. But but when you run into a man or woman of God, when they when you speak the word of God, God is watching over what that you word. are speaking to perform. It is not your name at Jesus. risk, it is his name at risk. Jesus. And when you speak it, God says, My word always brings increase. Yes. I am the God yes. of increase. And see what well, we have perverted increase. We look at increase. Stuff, 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 stuff. My says, no, 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 sir. No. Come on, sir. He said, it is you I want Come to on, increase. Sir. It is you that he says that I have declared a word over you. It is you and my word is being when my word that I declare declared over you to be in my image and after my likeness. When I am declaring the word over you, I'm watching over that word to perform it in you that you may increase in me. Yes, yes, that you yes, yes. Because God had me say this. He had me, he had me say this properly. He had me say um, that we know that we have matured. A person, you know that when they have matured, when God can uncover somebody else before you and then him uncover somebody else before you, you can cover them in him. Yes, 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 See, yes. See, when you can, I said, God, ooh, I said, it, it made me look at myself. He said, when I, if, if, if I can uncover somebody before you, but you so into me, you so connected to the power source that when they walk in the darkness, you can turn on the light and cover them. Yes. You can cover them. What does it mean turn on the light and cover them? You can stop them from bumping their head. You yeah. can stop them from yeah. going into the hole. You can stop them from going into the ditch. You can love them from moving. You can love them and speak the truth to them and stop them. And if they heed to what I have called you to say, then you, you, you have saved the life. You have yes. saved the life. He said, oh my God. He said, keep your eyes on me, son, when you preach. Keep your eyes, or you will get discouraged by people. And he says, why? Because some at different times in different places, I give increase and you're looking at you. Well, sometimes we want immediate gratification. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why we that's why in this new church, in this false church, the Satan know we want immediate gratification, so he gonna give us some type of emotionalism. He yes. gonna give oh, he gonna give us something. And I'm not saying he gonna give you something to make you think. But see, faith says I don't need to see anything. I just believe that I God believe. can give an increase. I believe that God told me to say it. I believe you ain't got to shake. You ain't got to cry. When I release that word, I believe the one who watches over his word to perform it can give increase in that area. So you can walk away looking crazy. You can walk away looking like, I know you wonder why am I smiling? Uh, because my faith is in the one who can give increase in that area. I yes, said, oh my God. Yes, he said, do you believe that I can get increased? Do you believe I can turn the water into wine? Do you believe I can cause the blind to see? Do you believe I can cause the deaf to hear? Now watch this. I believe it. Then I said, God, I believe it if you say it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to catch it right there. I believe it if you say it. I can't just go grab it. I got to know that he said because there are times that God may walk right past the demon. Come on now. When when, when the sun, let's look at the scripture. There in the times that when the sun's a skeever, when a spirit yeah. jumped on them, he said, when Paul walked by them, he said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Why didn't Paul deliver them? So that tells me there are times that God says, no, that ain't that ain't working for my plan right now. I'm going to let that go. In. Because later on, he ministered. From later on, he there was a ministry God taught from not even delivering in that perspective to show those who try to cast out in a name without a relationship. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so, so. My God. So, I just feel, oh, oh, I just listen, feel. so, so that's good, uh, Apostle. And I, I just want to tap into that mm. just um, really quickly. Mm. That, that we have to, to understand where we are mm. in our relationship mm. with God. We have to understand what we're doing and how we're doing it. When you think about it, like you said, that plug there, mm. one of the things that I've come to find out is that we and I, I said like this, I always say this, like we have so many leaders that want to take uh, control mm-hmm. of God's people, yeah. but don't want to take responsibility for God's people mm-hmm. because our charge is not to control his people. They right. don't, we don't own them. Right. Mm-hmm. They don't belong to us, Amen. but we do have to be responsible for them when he assigns them mm-hmm. to us. Yeah. And the reason I said that is this, and, and you made an intricate point because in my younger um, infancy in the in the, in the prophetic yeah. mm-hmm. um, and ministering mm-hmm. and preaching, I did, there are some things that I didn't know. And mm-hmm. let me tell you, when I, when God gave me a word and, and I was so hyped up on that word and I, I ministered to somebody, I wanted that thing to come to pass right mm-hmm. again. Yes. Guess what? God has allowed me to prophesy to some people that forfeited the assignment. Mm-hmm. And does that does that change anything that he has said to me? Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. because what I was expecting that God, if I said it, then they should do it. Right, right. right. But it don't work like that mm-hmm. because everybody don't have the same expectation on God that you have. Right. Everybody don't have the same relationship as God that you have. And I had to learn, and since we're using the FPNL thing mm-hmm. and the power source, I had to learn that electricity mm-hmm. is a reciprocated action. Mm-hmm. So we tend to come to church a lot of the times and we want God to pour in, Mm -hmm. but we don't want to pour out. Yes. Mm -hmm. We want God to give, but we don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. We want God to deliver, but we don't want to deny it. Right? Mm -hmm. So there there is something that that in electrical boxes, Mm -hmm. like the meter in your house, Mm -hmm. you ask for power, Mm -hmm. but then you have to feed the source still. That's how it knows that the power is there, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when I say that to translate that into into scripture Mm -hmm. is the woman at the well. There is something that God requires of us. Mm -hmm. Even that's why the scripture said from whom much is given, Mm -hmm. much Mm -hmm. is required, right? Mm -hmm. Because just as much power as he give you, he wants that same power Mm -hmm. back. Uh, And I'll tell you uh, a dream I had at the beginning of the year. And I think I shared it with you about the spirit of the body. I think the Lord spoke to me, but I had a dream. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, this dream scared the mess out of me. Mm-hmm. I was sitting at a round table, Apostle. And at this round table, there was a book, a portfolio, a black portfolio. And in the front of the portfolio, it said Prophet Everett. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I'm sitting at this table, and I've seen a couple more names around the table. But I'm like, okay, in a dream, I'm like, okay, God, I done made it. I done, I'm at the top, okay. We at a round table, I'm, you know, I'm doing it, you know. And then God says, in the dream, the voice says, present. So I pushed the portfolio out because we had to show. Mm-hmm. And I opened the portfolio, sex of God, and the portfolio was blank. Mm. I said, hold up, God. <laughs> You, I, Cause I know I ain't about to get to heaven, and you about to say you delivered in my name, prophesied in my name. Mm-hmm. But apart from me, I know you're not. Mm-hmm. And when I woke up, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. He says to me, He says, "I'm coming for my anointing." Mm-hmm. And when I come for my anointing, it better be in place, mm-hmm. right? What does that mean? If we call ourselves prophets <coughs> and apostles and preachers and teachers. When God shows up on the scene, he better find us working. Yes. He better find his word in action. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be charged for the things that we say he told us to do Mm -hmm. that are not getting done. Why is that so important to the saints? Why is that so important to us? Because God requires of us. He wants something from us. I'll tell you how that is true. The Bible says in the book of uh, John, the fourth chapter, and um, the seventh verse, the woman, the the, the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus had a conversation with her. First of all, we know that she was in doubt, right? Mm -hmm. She was in doubt because she was already saying that she got all this stuff going on. She got your husband, they husband, (laughs) all, you know what I'm saying? She she was vibed up. Yeah. She was vibed up uh, with the wrong men. 
Right. Wasn't even a tub. Mm-hmm. Right? So she had she had her man on that way. Mm-hmm. That's another story. <laughs> so she she was there and she came to this well. But one of the things that I teach is before that, mm-hmm. the Bible says that when Jesus was with the disciples, he made a statement that we tend to overlook. Mm-hmm. He said in the word, he said, I must need go through Samaria. Mm-hmm. Right? Why is it that he changed his whole route mm-hmm. to meet this woman? At the well. Why? Mm-hmm. Because when you live a life circumspect and hungry for change, mind you, I didn't say God. Mm-hmm. I said when you live a life that is hungry for change, when you live a life that is hungry for, for deliverance, even without having a relationship with God, what God would do is change the direction and come see about you mm-hmm. to see if you really want him. Right? Mm-hmm. To see if you are really, if you really want deliverance. Because guess what? There are some people out there right now that want deliverance but don't know the God that delivers. Mm-hmm. They, they want to be free but don't know the God that frees. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said earlier, some planted some waters, but God, only God, can give the increase. There are people out there that are living right now. So when he said that the harvest is right, he didn't mean that they were going to be out there speaking in tongues. When he said the harvest is right, they weren't going to be in church hat because guess what? Holiness is not a garment. Mm-hmm. Holiness is not the outfit that you put on to mm-hmm. look like you know God. Mm-hmm. There, are, there is a cry for deliverance. You may not hear Jesus when they cry. You may not hear God when they cry. But the cry is to be free. And the Bible says whom the sun set free is free indeed. And when you in a desperate situation like that, it gets God's attention for him to come by, change his route. I'll prove it. I'm going to come back to this, but let me plug here because it fell in my spirit. Look at Jesse. The Bible says when Jesus was going to go bring Lazarus up out of the grave, or, uh, was that the story of Lazarus up out of the grave? Jesse's uh, uh, child was at home sick. So guess what happened? What happened? He sent a word. He was going to perform this thing, but what did he do? He changed for a moment this situation, and he sent the word for healing over them. Are you in a position desperate enough for the God that we believe in? Are you desperate enough to be free? I'll say it in translation. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired to the point that you can get God's attention? He said, I must need go through Samaria, which means that I know what I had planned. I know where we were going. I know what all y'all expected of me. But there, for some whatever reason, I got to go through Samaria. Then he went and met this woman at the well. Something that stood out to me so greatly that was intricate to me. He, we talk a lot about him delivering her and him giving her the word Mm -hmm. and her preaching and her ministering after But guess what? She gave God something. She gave Christ something. Mm -hmm. Before he could do any of that, he needed something from her. Mm -hmm. He he needed this thing in order for him to perform, to watch over his word, to perform it. Because one thing about it, two things for sure, God will never perform his word in the midst of a lie. Mm -hmm. Because he says that a liar shall not tarry in my sight. So if you're living a lie, God don't even see you. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that the woman at the well, he said to her, in one translation, give me drink. Mm-hmm. In another translation, he said, I thirst. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So watch this. What he required of her in order to give her what she needed was truth. Mm-hmm. Was true. She gave him the truth about who she was. And he, when he asked her about the husband, she says that I don't have a husband. He said, you have said well. And then when she went to minister about it, she said, come see a man that told me about me. So God from us, that currency, in order to get into that source, that love, that power, what we have to now start doing is giving God the truth living the truth in order for him to reciprocate the truth in his word to us. Mm-hmm. Pastor, you're about to make me run in here mm-hmm. in a second. Yeah. Run. No, no, run. <laughs> Man, I, no, I'm, no, I'm telling you that. I'm, I'm sitting here just listening. I'm, um, and I pray that everyone is, is, is listening because I, I truly believe that, um, that God wants to give increase. Yes. God wants to give increase and that he's watching um over his word, 
to perform it that it may give increase. Yes. But as the man of God says that to give increase, you got to be willing to speak the truth. You got to be willing when God asks where you at. You know, it's funny that a lot of times in ministry, I'm sure you get the same thing in life. You ask somebody, how you doing? I'm okay. I'm blessed. I'm good. Yeah. I'm blessed. All these generic answers. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and as long as you stay hiding behind the lie, Mm. You're not willing to face the truth. Because only when you face the truth are you in a position to be uh, transformed. Yes. It's just going to tell you what's so interesting. I wrote this down. Jesus will alter his direction. You say he altered his direction because he saw someone needing. But Jesus can't. All, that's why he says the harvest is great. But the laborers are coming. Mm -hmm. Let us pray to the king of the harvest for more laborers. Why? Because I see people needing help, but I have no one that I can send. Mm -hmm. He says, do the work of an evangelist to prove your ministry. In other words, have a heart that God can alter your plan. Yeah. To lead you that I must go. Like, let me tell you what's so funny. Um, I go, I'm in the house yesterday, I mean, on Saturday. I, I'm, I'm, I'm compelled to go walking. I'm compelled, but I feel like, okay, so as I go walking, I go over the hill. But, but see, and as I'm walking, there was two guys going, and I just said something. And what I said, I was actually getting ready to talk to the other guy, but what I said drew the other guy My to God. the point where he walked towards me. My God. And see, that was at the Samaritan. Yeah. See, God said, no, you're not going to walk in because you are mine. I'm going to alter your coming. Have mercy. You need to go for a walk. Jesus. Like he said, I must need Jesus. to go. And we're telling God, God said, I must need to go through Opalaka. Oh. I must need to go through uh, the school system. My I God. must need My God. to go through the hospital. I must need, but we're saying to God today, no, I don't have time to do what you are in need of. I need you to give me A, B, C, D. Yeah. I need yeah. you to give me this. Yeah. That is a fractured um, gospel. And, and if the gospel is fractured. Oh, I love that. And, 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 and it's something that you said that, that it kind of exposed that fractured gospel. Um, you said earlier that when you are in a dark place and you do not understand. You said about, we're talking about, you were talking about comprehension. Mm -hmm. And a person cannot love when they don't have full understanding. When they, when they, when they, they can't love from a broken place. Right. Matter of fact, um, what I found out is that when something is, I like to say cracked. Um, and I, I use this as illustration often. I'll say, if you had, let's say there's a beautiful bouquet of roses. And we pull the we put the roses inside the vase, right? And when we pull the roses, when we put roses inside the vase, what do we pull in there to sustain them? Water. We pull water. We pull that water, the word, the washing of the word. But what's interesting about the washing of the word, we're pouring the water in there, and the water has the ability to sustain those roses. But the problem is that the vase has cracks in. So what is being poured in there to sustain Jesus. it is really becoming messy because you didn't Jesus. let God deal with your heart. Jesus. But what's being poured into people is becoming messy because we're not allowing God, like you said, to deal with us first. Yeah. In other words, you, you have the word, but it's becoming messy because you got cracks in your heart. Yeah. And you know what's interesting about cracks in the heart? When there's cracks in the vase, what you're pouring in there is coming out through the bottom. Now yeah. think about this. If you had laid out a white uh, tablecloth, you later, it's making a mess. So you're trying to look beautiful. God's trying to pour light in you, but you won't let God deal with you. So it is a mess. And, we, and that's what the church looks like today. It's very messy. It's very, everybody's about they wounded. Everybody this and that is very really messy. God. Because we don't understand that the situation that arrived, even in church, in the confrontation, whatever, were really to expose you yes. and your positioning with God to deal with your 
insecurities, your you, you and um, because he says, I'm going to try the thing in you. Yeah. I'm watching over it to perform it, right? Yeah. And I, I want increase, but I can't increase you because you won't tell the truth. You're still blaming Sister Bobo for making your response, but naturally, Dosis Bobo did what she did, what she did. Why didn't you respond yes. in the word? Yes. Why didn't yes. you continue to respond? We always want to blame somebody else for provoking us as if they're provoking Jesus. us. Jesus. Because it costs us no longer to operate in the word of God. See, your reaction, can you can never get away with God saying that they did this and that because they did this, my reaction did because he said, well, they did this to me and I was tempted on every side, but I responded in a way of love. I responded in a way of life. So we have to get to the place where, because everybody, everybody talking about, I was wounded. I was wounded. I'm not belittling the fact that you were wounded. Right. What I have an issue with is that if you were wounded, why didn't you die? Mm. <laughs> oh, I, this, that why, was enough to hear that. Why, why didn't you die? In other words, if I get wounded, then why didn't I? He said he was wounded by our transgressions. He was wounded. But yet in his wound, he was willing to sacrifice himself that the ones who wounded him may live. Mm. So there is a falsehood in the perspective in this weak church that we have. And where did the weak, where did the church become weak at? It became weak when the prophet said that God said, do not add anything to this so word. When we right. begin to add our culture, when we begin yes. to add our, our gender, when we begin to add ourselves to the word of God as a means of elevation of who we are and yes. becoming who he called us to be, now it's a weak gospel. When you are studying and you're trying to say, well, I'm studying because I want to use God to develop me to see how I see myself. Mm. No, you can't. Like the man of God said, you can't see. You're, you're not comprehending the darkness because it calls you not to be able to see. You lack understanding. And not a one word in the Bible said like this. You have not yet learned Christ Jesus yeah. yet. Yeah. Because you don't understand that when you are being tried by your faith, it is your response that reveals the glory of God. Yes, yes. It is your ability to cover somebody. Like, I'm going back to what he told me. Remember when I said he said it, he said it to me. I, and, I, and I'm first partaker. When he told me, you know, see, people think maturity is one a person that has the ability to expound elo eloquently with the word of God. Right. Well, right. I don't know, as Paul said, I, I, though I speak, I don't come, I, though I can speak with Paul Call kind of it lost to speak eloquently. Yeah. He didn't want any attention to himself. He just wanted to be the power in what Jesus Christ did, the act of love. He said, I want you to see the act of love. I don't want you to see me. Mm. Amen. But what we have done is we think, oh, look, oh, look how he is found on the word of God. And he's a, and look how uh, and the Bible says people are going to have itchy ears. Yep. They're not going to want to have hear sound they doctrine. Because sound them. doctrine brings you to a place where you are uncovered, but the one who's uncovering you has enough Christ to what? Give you life. Yes. Yeah, Come on, man. Because God had me. Oh. Listen, 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 listen. Before you go off on that, <laughs> let, let, let me say this really, really, really quickly. Okay. We, we, don't, we don't get to. And I say this with all love and kindness. We as believers, we don't get to just be human. Yes, come on. We don't get to, quote, God knows my heart. Yes. We, we, we don't get to do that because once we get to a level in God, and if you really understand the word of God, the scripture does say that God knows the heart. Mm -hmm. But we leave out the most right. important yeah. part. Come on. He says, for God, God searches the heart of man, mm -hmm. and he knows the heart of man, mm -hmm. and it is Desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Take a moment to think about that. So when you're quoting God knows my heart, that's you using an excuse to say, well, this is the reason I sin. Mm -hmm. God have mercy on yes. me. Watch, check this out. And I wanted to say this also. We must mm -hmm. understand that when we come into the call and, and we accept the call, and, and this is going to get real interesting right here, mm -hmm. nothing happens to you. Mm -hmm. It only happens through you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing, and, and I'll say this, I'll, I'll say this, when you answer the call of God, when God has called you, nothing happens to you. Well, prophet, I'm hurt. Prophet, I get hurt. I, I, I lack. I do this. I do that. No, it's still not happening to you. It is happening through you because God chose you to do something in the earth realm so that he can get his word out. 
That's, it, it didn't happen. God, I was molested when I was a child. That didn't happen to you. That happened through you because there was a vessel that was needed to bring a testimony 10 years later mm -hmm. for somebody who will go through the same incident, the same situation. And we must understand in the body of Christ that when God do, and you, and I want to use this, and then before I leave my mind, I want to use this example because you talked about Sister Bobo. I knew her when I was in the old church. <laughs> um, so Sister Bobo, um, um, you got an encounter with Sister Bobo, mm -hmm. and, 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 and and you got an argument, and you feel some type of way. She said something that was unholy, da da da, this and that. Um, and my apostle says something like this: You have to learn how to give a godly response to an ungodly situation, mm. right? That that's amazing, yeah, right? Yeah. That is good. Yeah, that um, is. But but yeah, I, but I want I want to say this right here really quickly. How is it that we are so comfortable with saying that we're called of God, mm -hmm. that we're the walking word of God, and the minute one of our brothers or our sisters fall, we're using that same word to judge them? Mm -hmm. Watch this. If I got in a, a situation with you, Apostle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Remember the word of God said, he who is strong, restore him that is weak mm -hmm. in love. Right? Yes. That's what the Bible tells us. This is why that is so important to understand the word line upon line and precept upon precept. Because if you act out in my presence, mm -hmm. it is not for me to say you don't have God. It is not for me to say that you, 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 whatever the situation is, what is happening is, remember I said when you said you walk mm -hmm. and the man and then the other man came? Right. What you must understand is God put you in that position mm -hmm. because that sister or brother was going to act out anyway mm -hmm. and he needed you there to cover them mm -hmm. so they don't act out to the wrong person. Yes. They don't act out in front of the Ooh, wrong yeah, unbeliever. Yeah, they don't, yeah, yeah, I put yeah. you in the place yeah. as a grace untold them. Mm -hmm. So you and when you respond, watch this, when you respond outside of my will, now I got to charge their act on your hands. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to understand, like Jesus, when he went into the temple and the man was full of demons, before he could say anything, the demonic force said, why have you come to torment us? Yeah. What you must understand, even in your brothers and sisters in Christ, when you come into their presence, if at any given time there is a manifestation of anything other than God, it is not for you to judge them, condemn them, knock them down, break them, but you have to cover them in love. Why? Because because they deserve deliverance and God used you to cover them, to shield them so nobody else can see it. So no, watch this. We, and we have to be very careful of this, that we are walking the word of God truthfully because the word delivers. Yes. Yes. The word brings into restoration. Yes. The word convicts and it reconciles. Yes. So what I've come to understand that even as a prophet, we're not prophesying. There are just certain things I won't say about people's life that God showed me. Why? Because he showed it to me yes. so that I can cover it so nobody else will be able to see it. Is yes. God allowing them to operate in secret? No. But what he has done is he has allowed, remember the Bible says that he sent, uh, uh, Saul was tormented by spirits that were sent by God. Yes. So we all are think hunky dory that everything is going to be good. God, no. God will send a spirit to torment you if you're in disobedience. And the Bible said David had to bring forth a Shema praise in order for the spirits to release Saul. Why is that important that David did that? The one Saul wanted to kill. The one Saul then after that tried to annihilate. Why is that story so important? Because guess what? Saul was a king in the public eye. He dealt with demonic forces. He was tormented by spirit, but God used David to cover Come him on. so nobody would see his mistake, so nobody would see his fall. God used the presence, his presence in David, so what I'm saying is in you. What we have to now start working on is when we get a hold to the drug addict, when we get a hold to the prostitute, the, 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 the murderer, when we get a hold to the to the drunk, the drunk addict, the, 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 the lesbian, the homosexual, when we get a hold to them, it is not our job to call ourselves trying to cast out demons. It's not our job to try to try to preach them into heaven. It is our job to cover them in love so nobody else will be able to see their nakedness. Why is that important? Because love covers a multitude of sin. What else does love do? Love drives out iniquity. Yes. So if you can love them, you can love them into deliverance. Deliverance is not speaking in tongues. Deliverance Deliverance is not preaching from the pulpit. True deliverance comes through love and love alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I'm excited now. Y'all can come. Amen. 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 My God. My God. And you know what is interesting about the um the young man, just the, the, the young man that I ran into, God had me to say that to him that he, I turned from my phone. He said, turn on the light. And God just, I said, God just wanted to, you, 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 to cover him. And I used the illustration to him. I said, um, if you had a son, you didn't have any kids, and you saw your son um, running in the street, what you do? He said, I would go get him and bring him back in position. I said, God sent me here today to tell you he wants you back in position. Thank you, Jesus. He says he wants you back in position because not God, your disobedience to truth, it is the lie that is seeking to your demise. So we have to understand, it is the lie that we conceive this, that bursts the demise. People are like, God, I'm destroying me. No, truth is trying to bring you into order. To stop the lie, the lie don't destroy yeah. you. The lie is going to destroy you. It is Satan's character to kill, steal, and destroy. When we move contrary, see, you cannot move contrary to what God said. Oh my, I want to say this. I want us to get this. I want me to get this. I want all of us to understand this. When God speaks a word to perform it, God's word is not idle. Mm, God's word. Good. God's word is not. Uh, it, he does not speak in vanity. Right. When he speaks word, he word. speaks truth. Yes. And truth destroys lies and chaos and destruction. And when you and I do not comply with that truth, it is our unwillingness to comply with the truth that is bringing us to destruction. Yes. It is not God desiring your demise. If I tell you, let me give an example. If I tell you there's a bridge that is broken ahead, um, I'm telling you that because What's ahead will destroy you. Yeah. I can see it. I, I, I've been down that road. I can tell you, don't go down that road because there is a bridge. I'm not judging you. I am telling you, don't go down that road yeah. because there is a bridge that is broken and you and it's going to take you to trouble. Now, if you heed to the truth, you are blessed. Through, you are yes. tremendously blessed. Why? Because you do not run into that adversity that was down that road. Because I exposed it to you. Yeah. But when you don't comply with that, now you are either stuck or in serious damage or in delay of reaching your purpose because you went down a road that was told to you that was contrary to the word of God. And we have to understand that God's word is so, when, you know, we have a prophet, you know, we talk about prophet Barbara and true prophets as yourself. They're going to tell the people, be in compliance with God's word. The word of God. See God. A true prophet will always tell you, mind. see God, yes. see God, see yes. God, see God. Why would he always tell you? Why? Because a true prophet understands it is in the word of God is where your safety is. Yes, your God. safety is in the word of God. Your safety is not in your feelings. Your safety is not in your desires. Your, your safety is not in your own wisdom. Your safety is not in your own, on what you owe. Your safety is mm. in the word mm. of God. He said he watches over his word to perform it. He never said he watched over your feelings. Uh -oh. He never said uh -oh. he watched over your emotions. Uh -oh. He never said he watched over your degree. He never said he watched over what you want. He said he watches over his, his word, word to perform it. The increase in God is in the seed. The seed is the word. If you if, if you make none and void the seed, why do you expect the harvest? Uh oh oh. Why do we expect the harvest when you make none and void the seed? And what Satan does is this. Satan will get you off track of the sea by you, by if you, he's the father of lies. Remember, on, 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 on Thursday, God had me say this. Um, there is a uh, original truth. There is a original liar. And, and both of them came from heaven. I never looked at that before before. Satan, the only difference between both of them came from heaven. You say, what? Yes. The difference is, one was sent from heaven and one was cast out. Are you being cast out or are you being sent? Are you being sent? <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. The question you have to ask yourself, did God send you? God never oh, said because Jesus. you, he said, how would they know unless I would? Send them a preacher. You can't go because somebody said you can preach. You can't go because somebody said you should. You can't go. You better know, make doggone sure that God sent you and you are not cast out. Yeah. Satan yeah. was cast out of heaven. One third of the angels were cast out because they were no longer desiring to be in compliance and in alignment with the word. God. 
When you are in alignment with the word of God, you are sent. Yes. And you need authority to go. Yes, yes, yes. Believe it or not, let me say it again. When you are in alignment with the word of God, you are sent and you need authority to go. Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I only do what my father said is do. I only say what my he was operating under authority. Satan rejected authority, so he was cast out. Yeah. Do you reject authority? Be careful about rejecting authority. You yes. can find yourself being cast out. Yes, yes. Listen, God's functioning does not change on earth as it is in heaven. Why? He prayed. He said, tell his disciples pray this way. Our Father, who oh, are in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God's authority in our heaven is given to those who receive his spirit on earth. Yes, yes. And that and there is a subject, there is a submission. Words like submission, words like loyalty, words like humility are not old fashioned words. Right. Right. They're not old fashioned words. Right. They are they're they're words. Foundational they, words. They are foundational words in the kingdom. Yes. You're not going to tell God, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Right. No, you're going to be led. Those who are led by the Spirit or the sons. To be led means that, come on, to be led. If I take prophet and I grab his hand and I lead him, he's being led. You, you are being led. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. I, I didn't know that that um, God had a divine meeting. I just know because I belong to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I belong to him. And therefore, when you belong to him and I'm his son, that I'm getting up because the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and call for this purpose. When you are called for this purpose, you may think it's you feeling like you have to go to the store. You may think it's you feeling like that you need to go for a walk on the beach. But God is saying, I, and you know, you know, you know, you know, my ride on that thing, which is there, right? God is saying, what, what did Jesus say? He, 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 I, must I, I must, leave. I must leave to go. See, God is looking for some sons. And, oh, y'all don't realize yeah. some things. That was never that thing leaked in my spirit. I must, I got the, I said, I I'm able to see, I Jesus. comprehend that revelation and what He said that I comprehend it to the very essence that God is saying. That I, I must, I'm in need. Well, I said again. I must need. I must need. He said, I'm looking for some sons and daughters who must need to be in compliance yes. with the word of God. That God can alter your schedule, even if, if, if you are comfortable. You know what God dealt with me about? Then I'm going to let you go. I, I, don't say. I had a sister. Somebody told me. This, this, I'm saying it because it's state of my spirit day. And this sister told me. I'm just being honest. This sister told me. And, um, and she said to me. Uh, we were at the we was at the hotel, and she told me, and I got to just be honest because this God put so much. Uh, and I hadn't seen this one sister yet, and she had her and her husband, and they had some children, and they were they had actually left the church. And uh, but the sister I was talking to, she said this to me that I thought was interesting. She said, "Well, she said, well, she was looking for something that was more comfortable. Her and her husband was looking for something that was more comfortable for their family." And I, I didn't think anything. I'm like, okay. But I don't know why today doing this, that vexed me. God was like, what made her think that I, what made her think that my priority, that my priority was about her family being comfortable? Comfortability. Mm -hmm. In other words, when did obedience become in play? God based on you mercy. perceiving that you need to be comfortable. God have that mercy. your family, the very test was, could you take your kids? Could you strive with God? even when it is not comfortable, to make somebody else comfortable. You don't think Peter, come on, Peter was married. You don't think uh, the caller on his life made his family a little uncomfortable? Yeah. Yes. I, I perceive that it did. Yeah, I believe it was uncomfortable for God to come down from heaven. Mm -hmm. To have to go put on flesh and to be disrespected by the very ones yeah. who he created. All that divinity and that one Come piece on. of skin. And to be slapped in the face. Yes. Come on. To be slapped in the face by the very hand he created. Jesus Christ. Come on. And to be spit on by the very mouth he created. Did he not tell Moses, I made 
made your tongue. Man, to be spit on by the very mouth he created, that was made uncomfortable. To have, to have the audacity to tell God that because this is not comfortable for my children, because it's not lined up with what I think is, what, where do you, where you get that from? What, what did you... What did you perceive that God movement had anything to do with you making? Right. But see, the problem is, though, it ain't about being made comfortable. It's about getting victory. Yeah. Because sometimes you ask anyone who ever um, came in sports or anyone who has ever competed or had, or had to um, endure a task, they had to be made very uncomfortable. But they didn't mind being made uncomfortable because they saw being uncomfortable. In the, and the long end result was the victory. Yeah. What was it going to produce in you and your ability to be made uncomfortable? Yeah. What was it going to produce in your children? And how were they going to be able to see God in a way where it was going to be made them un uncomfortable? How could they have saw the love of God in that situation in the way you were going to? Because guess what? Because children, because sometimes when you speak to your children, what you might be saying might be uncomfortable for them. Yeah. Because at that time, they want to go play. Yeah. At that time, they may want to go do the things that they want to do. So what you are requesting of them can be very uncomfortable. Yep. But since you taught them that um, that we say obedience is better than sacrifice, but you say no, obedience is not better than sacrifice. You said being comfortable is better than obedience, and therefore I don't have to sacrifice. So now later on, when your children don't understand sacrifice or obedience, it's because of you. Jesus. That's just the truth. Jesus. But see, that's, and I'm not saying this because I'm just telling you what God it's showed the me. Truth. It's what it's the absolute, it's the, it's the actual truth. You show me. See, the, let me tell you something. Oh, I gotta tell y'all this. See, we're in a time that people are choosing themselves because they're choosing glamour and they don't want glory. They think mm. no, it's not glory they're looking for. They're looking for glamour. They're looking for a stage and they want glamour. Because if you read the scriptures. And let's look at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Aaron. Can you tell me which one of them chose God? Mm, 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 Peter. Matthew, tell me which apostle chose, chose God. God. Oh, no. <laughs> Matter of fact, even when the brothers went and got it, even in scripture, when one went and got it, he went and got him based on it, and he told him who he was. What I'm trying to get you to see is that, and there's not one of them, come on, he chose people who were functionally operating in life. Yes. Mm. yes. But they were not living. Yes. 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 They were yes. not living, yes. but they were functioning in life. Matthew is a tax collector. That's why I, I want everybody, please, go watch the movie The Chosen. Let me tell you why the movie The Chosen is so good. The, the one, one thing the movie The Chosen did that I have not seen depicted in any movie, in many movies of Jesus, The Chosen made them human. It made relationships. It connected them to the job. When, when, it, when they did Matthew, they, they didn't just show Matthew as a tax collector. They showed how he got the job, his family, how he was looking on. It made him look like feelings and emotions and situation. So when you understood Matthew's position, they looked at it when it took Peter. They showed Peter and his Peter and his brother working and they had a relationship earning money. They had showed them the deep intimacies of their job and their and, and humanity that they were operating in. So when you understand that, you can comprehend what it took for them to walk away from. My God. See, we don't understand what it took for them to walk away to yeah. really follow Jesus. Yeah. So because we don't understand what it took for them to really follow Jesus, we don't understand sacrifice. So since we don't understand sacrifice, we want to come to him because what we can get and not who we are becoming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I know, oh, I'm looking at this pastor. Oh, he get a house. I'm looking at this car. Oh, look, look at all this. I'm getting this. They're getting this and getting that. But when you study the word of God, it was about what they sacrificed. Yeah. It was about what they were willing to leave behind to get life. To live. To live. My God. My to live. God. That's why he tells us, we say, count the cost. Yes. He said, yes. count the cost. Because this is going to 
cost you something. Yes, Lord. Yes. It's Lord. going to cost you. You might not be able to go on vacations when everybody else going on vacation. Because there's a battle going on. Mm -hmm. There's warfare going on. And I mean, you might want to go to Puerto Rico, but I need you to go to Jamaica. Why? Mm -hmm. there, uh, there, uh, I'm in need of you. There, there, you got to keep saying I must need for you to go to Puerto Rico. And you, I know you want to go to Puerto Rico, but I must need for you to go, go to, to Jamaica. Jamaica. And I don't need you to stay in no five-star hotel. I must need for you to go to the poorest hotel Jesus, in Jamaica. Because somebody there... Needs it on hey. mm. I that's must need sir. for you to take this job that's going to pay you $20,000 less because there's somebody no. there that I need that need a drink of water. There's somebody there that has an issue with me and I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. going to need for them to get. You don't yeah. understand the value of a soul. Yeah. See, the value of a soul brings you to a place where I must need for you to sacrifice something. I don't want you to get married right now. I must need of you to be single right, right now, now because right now I need to send you some places that I don't want you to be connected right now. Jesus Christ. And all you're talking to me about is what you want, but you don't understand what I must, what I'm in need of. Yeah. Because I, that, I, that he said, if there's 99, and I said, leave. If I'm in must need of someone to lead you to get to the one, I need you to get to the one. Who will go? We like to say, send me, Lord, I will. You're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. We don't have you 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 the cause. We don't understand that. Yes, I would like to be. I would like to sit home with my wife on Saturday. On Saturday, but I must need of you. He showed me. Go. I'm like, cause I even told God, I said, Uncle Lock. I said, God, what's up? Like he said, what's good? Said, what's good in Uncle Lock, God? What's good? I said, man, what's good? He said, it's death. Someone must need a life there. Yeah. 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 He said. He showed me. He showed me in a vision the other night. I would drove my car and I opened the door of my car and I looked down. And I know it was over and I saw death on the on the floor. But he said, because I have given you life when you I said, I want, he said, I want you to step on it. Yeah. He said, I, I sent you there to step on death. I sent you there to declare life. I didn't send you there. Don't worry about a building. Don't worry about this. He said, I sent you there to declare life. Yeah. I sent you to declare, I sent you to release seeds, oh my yeah, God. Yeah. I sent you to release seeds to the heart. Look, I sent you, and this morning, yeah. because we went there, there was one young man sitting there uh, uh, who on that area. There was another young woman. I mean, there were people, because you are releasing seeds. Watch this, guy. I did this. Because we are releasing seeds, because we're going there, not preaching our church. We're not preaching. We're preaching Christ. And we're releasing seeds. God says, I'm watching over my word. He said, before. so get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get. See, when God said, get ready, get ready, get ready, he's only said, we, see, we done took that and twisted that. And we're like, get ready, get ready. We're like, oh, what well, I'm getting ready, get one of them. You know what I'm saying? When God said, get ready, get ready, he said, I'm about to bring increase. Yes. Why? Wow. Because he said, a laborer's work is higher. He said, because you have gone and you have released my word. And because I watched over my word to perform it. Let your hope be in what? Your faith be in what I have called you to release when you went into that territory. Because now I'm increasing and yeah, you're going to yeah. see souls get saved and lives get delivered by the word that I told you to release. And where death is, now life is bringing forth. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. No, that's good, Doc. I, I, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna be done. Cause you, you hype, you real yeah. hype. Yeah. You own it. Yeah, you <laughs> own it. Amen. Uh, uh, I, I just wanted to add to that. I love the fact because while you were talking, you and you said what was fe what fell in my spirit. Two of the things that fell in my spirit, you said. Um, one is the Bible asks us in the book of Matthew, what man desired to build a house, but don't first sit down. And count the cost. If mm. he build it without God, he build it in mm. vain. Come on, right? Come on. That's what the word of God says. Yeah. So what does that translate to? That means that how are we making a decision to do what it is that we say we're going to do and not first think that we're going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. He said count the cost. Why is that so important? Because this walk may cost you a walk. Ooh. This walk may cost you a relationship. This cost, this walk may cost you a marriage. This walk may cost you some finances. This walk may cost this walk may cost you your health. Mm. Why is that so important? And then you went over to say what what I love the scripture, and that's the, the word for this season yes. to my leaders. Mm -hmm. Who can I send? Yes. And who will go for us? Mm. 
Are we willing to, a lot of us are willing to go, mm -hmm. but don't go. Mm -hmm. God, I'll go, mm -hmm. but you ain't moved yet. Ain't moved yet. God, I'll go, but you ain't start the prayer team yet. Mm -hmm. You ain't start evangelizing. You ain't start evangelizing yet. You ain't moving on the word of God. Why is that so important? Because it ties into I must need mm -hmm. go through certain so, area. And I said like this, you said that it, it is, and one of the reasons we won't go is because we want Glamour. What was the other word you said? Glamour instead of glory. We want glamour instead of glory, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I liken it up to this. And think about this for a second. I'm the busy. very thing mm -hmm. that God hates, come on, come on, lives in the very thing that He loves. Mm -hmm. The very thing that God hates lives in the very thing. That's what my apostle say. Live in the thing that He loves. He hates sin, mm -hmm. but sin is ever so present in his creation, mm -hmm. and he loves his creation. Watch this. I, I ministered a, a sermon a couple of years ago, and, and the Lord gave it to me. He said, somebody is still in my glory. <laughs> Why is that so important? And, and, and it's because of this. There is, it is a dangerous thing to have access. Yes. And all of us want this power, all of us want these gifts, all of us want the ability to do and walk, but it is a dangerous thing to have access, and you have to be prepared to have access to the glory, right? You have to sit down and count the cost, whether or not you really want access to the glory. Why is that so important? For this reason, uh, an analogy, if you give me mm -hmm. a set of keys to your house, right? And you come home and there are several things missing, but the alarm didn't go off, mm -hmm. the door ain't been broke down, and a window <laughs> not broke. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about that thing, mm -hmm. you're going to now go from who robbed me to what? Who has access to my house, yeah. right? So translate that to God. What God is saying is, there is no longer a breaking into the church. Mm -hmm. There is no longer, but something is missing. This analogy he gave me because he did it with me with Eli, his son. There is an analogy there that God is saying, something is wrong with my glory. Mm -hmm. But who did I give access to my power? Mm -hmm. Why are the people not, if I gave you access to deliver, why I don't see deliverance? If I gave you access to heal, why is there no healing? God goes then from looking and saying what is missing to who got access. Mm -hmm. And whoever has access becomes the first subject of judgment. Mm -hmm. Are we walking around suspects of judgment unto God? Why is this important? Because of this right here. You use the analogy, I want to go to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. but I need to go to, to Jamaica. What we must understand is somebody, somewhere, called on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And because the flesh was taken off, mm -hmm. and he ascended, yes. and he is no longer tangibly here from that perspective. Right. He said, but I send a comforter. Yes. And that comforter is going to lead you into all truth. What you must understand is that your call is to be available. When he said, I must, why is it important to follow the, the, the compliance? I love that. Pause, I'm telling you, I'm going to say it. I'm going to act like you ain't going to say it. <laughs> so crazy. Why we need to be in compliance with the word of God is this reason. Somebody called on God. And he's not leaving heaven to come to the earth. So he said, instead of me leaving heaven, I got the sin all there. Mm. Instead of me leaving heaven, I can send Everett. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Because somebody somewhere needs to see that God is real. So, and then I love this. I love this. Let us hold on to this. If we don't take nothing else from here as mm -hmm. believers in God, let us hold on to what Apostle said right here. And he said it fast, and I know we overlooked it. He said somebody somewhere might have an issue with God. Yes. Mm. And we're supposed to be the ones to resolve mm -hmm. the issue. They are mad with God. Mm -hmm. They are angry with God. They lost their mother. Mm -hmm. COVID took out their husband or yes. wife. Mm -hmm. Their children got hit by a car. Somebody got shot down. They've been poor, living in a shelter, lost everything. They're mad with God. 
And we have to be the one to remind them that God is still a loving God. Yes. God is still able. So that's why we have to be obedient when he says to us, I don't need you to go with your friends today. I need you to go on over there and have dinner by yourself. Mm -hmm. I need you to go on over to the beach. I need you to go and evangelize. I need you to go into the shelter because somebody called on my name and I need to show up for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show up through you. Mm -hmm. And if you say you are mine and you show up in the wrong manner, oh, somebody got to get that way. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, my friend, my God. I just want to say this. I pray that we are receiving, amen, that we're receiving with the, um, with the man of God because um, we are both his sons and we walk in the office of an apostle and prophet. Um, and I know what God has declared and decreed today is written. Um, uh, I thank God for the man of God. Uh, I, I wanted to, to read this real quick before we get ready. Because I think a lot of times where we connect glory can really, that's where we have a confusion in. And John 13, he kind of cleared up glory a little bit. He says in John um, 13, the 31st verse, he says, Therefore, when he was gone, out. And Jesus said, now the son, I said, hold on, let me go for a little bit more. He says, wait a minute, he says, oh, hold up. Where it goes, and Jesus, I'm sorry, and Jesus answered, and he said to, and he, I'm mean, he, oh, excuse me, he is to whom I shall give the sob, which I have dipped in. And when he had dipped the, the sob, he gave it to Judas, the mm -hmm. son of Simon. And after Simon, Satan entered into him. And said Jesus unto him, that thou doest do it quickly. Satan has entered into Judas. And Jesus is now seeing Satan, who has now entered into Judas, to portray him. Now no man wow. at the, at, watch this, he said, now no man at the table knew for what intent that spake in this into him. For some of them thought, because Judas had a bag, that Jesus had said unto him, buy those things that we may have need and against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then gave, received the sorrow, and immediately out, and was night. So now Judas is gone out. Now Judas is going to portray Jesus. I want y'all to hear this. Watch what happens next. Judas is going to portray Jesus. Mm. Jesus. And then verse 31 says, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. And God is glorified in him. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus is about to be glorified. The Son of Man is glorified. And God, when he's about to be portrayed. Yes. And his flesh is about yes. to be put to death. Glory is in the See, suffering. I believe that sometimes we have Jesus. a misunderstanding of God's glory. We think God's glory is intangible things. Even though the Bible says that life does not consist in abundance of things that we possess. God's glory would never be in something that is tangible. Because it fades away. Moses had a fadeaway glory, which was yeah. the law. Jesus had that eternal glory, which is eternal in, in the presence of God. Yes. Into eternal life. The glory, and we don't, when we talk about glory, the glory of God is when we when we become more like him. To become more like him, there are scriptures that tell us that we must decrease, that he may increase. Yes. There are scriptures that says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. Yep. There are scriptures that say, you must be willing to lose your life to, 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 to yeah. These scriptures are what Jesus is saying that brings glory to God. I'm gonna end it, my, my, I'm, I just want to say this. Satan was cast out of heaven because he wanted to fulfill his desires. Jesus was sent out of heaven because he wanted to fulfill God's desires. Yes, yes. Understand the difference between the two. One wanted to fulfill, one was sent to fulfill God's desire, his father's desires. One was, one was cast out because he cared about fulfilling his own desires. Thank you, Jesus. We have to know the difference. And I believe that Satan, in his subtle manner, has ushered in a mindset that we can be in God's house and, about, and God is not about fulfilling every one of our desires. Mm. Mm. God is about you picking up a cross and following him. 
Because you can't go. We can't go. The old man can't go where the new man needs to show who Christ is. My old man is not going to speak. My old man, if I got sent me to a woman and I lead her to me and she's in my bed, I didn't lead her to life. Mm. I led mm. her to death. If I led her to me, and there's many, and there are many, let me tell you something. There are many Delilah spirits. And Delilah spirit is can be a man and a woman too. What is yes. Delilah spirit? Delilah spirit is to lead you. First, the first thing Delilah do is attach herself to your emotions. Yes. Delilah attaches herself to your emotions. Delilah also shoots straight for the heart. Delilah is, a, we talk about Jezebel. No, Delilah yes. likes to shoot straight for the heart. Oh. And she wants you to find rest in who she is. Delilah will call, she will puff you up to find rest in who she is. Because Delilah's objective is to drain your strength, to bring you into bondage and where you were, to bring you to where you cannot see, where you become blind. Yes. That's the light of spirit. And Samson laid his, he, Samson was born to destroy the works of the enemy, but he kept laying his heart in the wrong lap. He kept laying his heart in the lap that was, a, that was attached to the craving of his flesh. And instead of laying his, his, his heart in the lap that was attached to the desire of his father. We have to watch where we are laying our heart. Is it connected to the desires of your flesh? There are people in church, women, why they so easy to be deceived? They, they, they are so excited about getting married. Married, getting married does not deliver you. My God, say that. Getting again, married sir. does not solidify your place in God. Though it is good for one to be married, it is good, it is better for all to be in alignment in the will and the purpose of God. God loves marriage. He's not against marriage. He loves marriage. But when marriage and things begin to be exceedingly above your relationship with God, or this is what your relationship with God is about, you have error. No, your, our relationship with God is about redemption. Yes. Uh, reconciliation, reconciliation. Um, empowerment that's why the Bible says when a man finds a wife he finds a good thing meaning God's already dwelt because there is none good but one God so if he finds a wife he finds a good thing he obtains favor with God why because the good thing he found was God in her yeah. he found her already serving God he found her already on the battlefield amen so man, I, 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 man of God Listen, I, 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 I listen. I done walked away with some substance right here. Me too, me too. I, 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 man, first I want to thank you, man. It's, I think it's always a blessing to sit. The Bible says, you know what? Two are gathered in His name; He's in the midst. Amen. Yes. I enjoy. I sit. I sit back and watch what God is doing, and God is speaking, man. God, I speak light, um, continuously over you, man. And, and, and God, I do and fulfill all that God has called you to do and fulfill. Yes. Uh, I love you, man. I thank God for you. I thank you that you didn't think it would rob you to come spend some time with your brother today, oh, man. And um, I pray that um, that that the, the old who are listening have an ear and hear what the Spirit Lord is saying. On this note, I'm gonna turn it over to my brother, and he'll he'll lead us he lead us out with a prayer. He also led anybody needs salvation. He'll fit here salvation. He'll lead us in that. Um, anything in his heart that God has given him to close out, go ahead. Amen. Um, and so before we close out, I won't be uh, long or anything of that manner. But what I will say is this, that it is now time to turn our eyes back to the God Come on. that we serve, yes. that we profess, that we proclaim. I just uh, enjoyed a birthday this um, weekend. And one of the things, April, also, one of the things that was um, pressed on my heart, and I say this for the viewers and the listeners and, and the, and the place is this. I've been doing this for a very long time, and it has been doing me for a very long time. Um, and I feel that, and I believe that, that God has given me an un, uh, undeserved wisdom and an undeserved knowledge, and I feel like I've been, you know, pleasing God. But when I uh, had this birthday this weekend, one of the things the Holy Spirit said to me, 
He says, now I'm taking you into a place of maturity. Right? That may sound weird, because it sure sounds weird to me. Like, God, I felt like I was maturing the things mm-hmm. of God. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like, I mean, I'm not out here renegading. I'm not out here just too running to and fro, like, you know. But what I realized is, we have to be taken into maturity. Because the Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end result is destruction. And, and, and as he began to minister to me, he said, now I need you to operate in the spirit of excellence. So I said that to say this. We serve an excellent, perfected God. God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. The scripture started out with God is able, but it ended with submission. God is able to do whatever he will because he watches over his word, but guess what? He won't do it to an unsubmitted vessel. He won't do it for an unsubmitted vessel. If you feel that at this moment in your life and in transition of your of your love towards God, that you need him more now than you ever did, I encourage you to just lift your hands and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, declare unto the Lord the truth of where you are in your life right now. You can forget the traditions, you can forget all of that stuff that, that you believe God wanted to hear because what God wants to hear is truth and the truth about you from you. And if you take that moment right now to say, God, I am a sinner in need of a savior and I want you to be my savior, the Bible tells us that if we confess, confess it with our mouth, believe it in our heart, that we are saved. But guess what? Salvation don't end there. Once you receive them, seek them. Once you receive them, seek them. And seek them while he may be found. In Jesus' name, let us bow our head and go before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, God, that we are able to come and communicate your word, which is a privilege and a grace unto our life. God, we ask that those who heard on tonight, those who were viewing, those who God were tuned in, we ask that the anointed would have traveled through the frequencies of the air, God, and that even on this social media platform, God, that somebody heard your voice, somebody heard something that would have pricked their heart to change it, God, back towards you. Somebody, God, had heard something that would allow them to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. God, somebody heard something that will shift the trajectory of their home, God, and we thank you. I thank you for this great man of wisdom, this great man of God. I thank you for his team. I thank you for one body in Christ in love, God. I thank you for that ministry, God, your ministry. I just thank you for this opportunity to even be able, God, because we are unworthy vessels, but because of your grace and mercy, we are covered in love, which make us, makes us your perfected being, God. And God, with that being said, I have to make this request in prayer. God, I want to be sent and not cast out. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 amen.